child fire setting and juvenile arson is costing Americans more than $2 billion a year in property loss. People under 18 are setting 700 arson fires a day. This year alone, 300 children will die and 3,000 more will be injured by fire setting. It has become America's hidden epidemic. In Phoenix, Arizona, the Juvenile Fire Setter Intervention Program is managed by Carol Gross. For years, we would say it was a fire department problem, kids setting fires. But now we're saying it's not a fire department problem, it's a community problem, and it can be deadly. We have lost children in Phoenix and all over the country because children have set fires where other children have died. This has happened. This is real. I've talked to the police officer and see what we can do. Jerry DeMillo is with the Portland, Maine Fire Department. You have to remember that they're children. You can't, you can't look at what they did. You have to look at these are children. These are babies in, in those cases, and uh, they just need some help. They need some education, and they need some help. Puts his hand over his face, and he rolls. There's some information that this child needs to have that we need to provide. It's called nurturing. It's called uh, respect. It's called love. It's called let's take care of a family here. I've spent my whole legal career working on children's issues. I help kids who get in trouble. Commissioner Maria Del Mar Verdeen agrees with Jerry DeMillo's approach to intervention. I believe that the role of the juvenile court is not only to protect the community, but to uh, put the youth on the right track if they've deviated from that path a little bit. They're different than adults. They're unfinished business. And so we have a responsibility to do something to prevent the same act from occurring again in the future. In order for us to be able to address the needs of a child and the needs of the community as a whole, we have to be willing to look at the situation from the child's point of view. Many experts believe the attraction to fire setting starts at a very young age. Children watch how we use fire. It's pleasurable, it's controlled, it's positive. What they're saying to the child is, one, you can come this close to a live flame, it's okay. Two, they're saying you have control over that flame, you blew it out. Happy birthday to So the messages we're giving them are very mixed. And when they are experimenting and we're punishing them, they get confused. Mary Kay Abbey of the National Fire Protection Association believes children can learn the right message about fire safety if they hear it from us when they're small. Waiting until after a child has set a fire is kind of like dispatching the equipment after the house has already burned down. There are several things that parents of this age group can do to keep their children safer from fire. Number one is to strictly limit access of the children to matches and lighters. And we know, frankly, that this is something that parents often underestimate. Unfortunately, a whole lot of parents miss that lesson. Nobody ever taught them. While they would be unlikely to leave a loaded gun on a coffee table, they may keep their matches and lighters in a purse next to the fireplace and not think a thing about it. Our kids know where our matches and lighters are. If they're curious, if they want to set a fire, they know how to get those tools. It's up to us as adults to make sure they don't have access. Oh, no, those are very, very... Child fire setting can be reduced by preventing access, but can a parent really teach fire safety to a three-year-old? Yes, we've got plenty of documented instances in which very young children, as young as two and three years old, remembered what to do in a fire and did the right thing and lived because of that. In contrast to younger children who are motivated by curiosity or experimentation, juveniles who set fires almost always do it as a reaction to other problems. It's rare to find a troubled fire setter who does not come from a troubled family background. Frequently, single parent families, parents don't get along, don't get along with the kids. Usually it's the mom who's home and the dad's gone or he's perhaps emotionally distant. Sometimes the best way to deal with fire setting and arson is dealing with assertiveness, dealing with family issues, dealing with depression, sometimes dealing with abuse, sometimes dealing with substance abuse. In those areas where they don't have a program for detection and prevention and intervention, 
the problem seems to be getting worse and worse and worse. Some communities are reporting 80% of the arson in their municipality is set by kids under the age of 18. I think that's devastating. Arson is the most expensive crime in America, costing more in property loss than all other crimes combined. We don't hesitate to file the arson charges. They owe something, and they're going to pay that back. And, and my message to them is, you lit the match, you pay the price. And very often, they accept that. If we can work with a child and we can get them into restitution of public service rather than put them in some kind of an institution, juvenile justice looks at us in a very different light than they did in the past, saying, you know, this is an asset and this is a, uh, is a plus in the community that we can now do things to keep kids out of jail. I can't think of any court that would turn away someone who was coming to say, I have this resource for you. In fact, I think they would welcome it and want to be a part of it uh, so that this, is, this huge problem could be addressed early on with kids. You've got to know what your problem is first. And many communities, as I travel about, don't. Nobody is an expert in the field. We're all learning. So start collecting your own data. That's so important. Secondly, reach out to folks in your community, to professionals, and bring them in and sit down and start a dialogue. There are people out there who truly do care, and you need to reach out and find these people. Three years ago, Kwame Cooper of the Los Angeles Fire Department came to meet with school principal Anna McClinn with a new idea about a fire awareness program for the students. So we started talking and we created the curriculum and we added self-esteem components to the fire safety lessons uh, that we wanted to teach and the results have been outstanding. We'll talk about community, we'll talk about respect, We'll talk about responsibility. And you talk about some youth that are very, very proud about what they're doing. Because see, what we found out is when you empower youth at a very young age, they're capable of handling whatever it is that they're given, especially when you tell them they can do it. We've broken through that barrier, and now we're starting to really, really see the benefits of what we started three years ago. The community has a lot to offer when you bring them all together. They're going to bring things to the table that you never dreamed of, um, that you just kind of, it was out there someplace. You know, all you have to do is ask. All you have to do is bring it up and say, how are we going to handle this? And it flows. We're all learning. I really feel that. And this helps to raise the awareness of the entire community that, in fact, there is a problem, that kids do set fires, and that we need to be very proactive in what we're doing with them. Do you know what matches the liners make? Fire. Fire. There you go. The community has a stake in this problem. And I keep telling people, they're your kids, they're your buildings, this is your town. This is our problem. And we need to address it collectively. <laughs>